Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Why Georgia by John Mayer. For the basics of this song, you will just need a guitar and standard tuning. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve any guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Alright, let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so let's start with the main finger picking riff in the intro, which is a lot of fun to play. And once you learn to play this, you won't be able to stop playing it. It's just so much fun. So there's really only one bar of music that we need to learn here, but for the intro, it's repeated through four times. So let's break down this riff. Now for our finger assignments, our thumb is going to take care of the sixth and fifth strings. And our index, middle and ring finger will take care of the fourth, third and second strings respectively. Ideally, they won't pluck any other strings other than the ones have been assigned to. You can use other finger assignments if they're more comfortable for you, but from analyzing a lot of videos, I believe this is what John Mayer does. So we're gonna get into a G position like this, but you only really need to push down your middle and ring finger on the third frets of the sixth and second string. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pluck the bass note, and then right after that, we're going to pluck the third and second strings together with our middle and ring fingers, and after we pluck those second and third strings, we're going to hammer our index finger onto the second fret of the third string, like that. So one and then what we're going to do is drop our hands onto the strings to get a percussive slap. Most of this sound will actually come from the side of your thumb hitting the top strings and that string will momentarily slap onto the frets and that's how you get your sound. Now my suggestion here is don't open your palm and drop your hand like this to make the sound. Keep your fingers curled because as you slap your hand into place, your fingers ideally should slot back underneath their assigned positions. So just take a moment to practice that slap. And for me, I'm more or less just sort of dropping the side of my thumb onto those bass notes. And I'm just sort of rotating my wrist like this in order to get that sound. I'm not going flat like this. I'm sort of just rotating my wrist. And so far, right after that slap, we're gonna be plucking the second and third strings. So that's why it's important to slap our fingers underneath our assigned positions. So we're gonna pluck the second and third. And then at this point, you can lift your middle finger and hit the open fifth string. Those two plucks are quickly played one after the other, like that. So that's the first half of our riff. And one more time. Now for the second half of our riff, we'll change positions and we're gonna to go to a D at 11 sort of shape, but we're not gonna have our index finger here. So it's just ring finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string and middle finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. We're gonna start by pinching the fifth and fourth strings together. And then we're going to pluck the third string by itself. So, and then quickly do another muted slap after that. So, and one more time. And then to end this second half, we have a three note roll. So it's the fifth string, fourth string, and then third string with your thumb, index, and middle. So like that. And the second half of this riff all together. And again, it's so important that after the muted slap, you drop your fingers back into their assigned positions because then it makes it really easy to pluck the notes as opposed to doing this and then getting your fingers back into place. So that's it for the riff in total. Let's put the two parts together. So that's it for the intro, just that one bar played through four times, really nice and simple. Now if you're practicing this along with a metronome, one little tip here is that your muted slaps should always occur on the two and the four beat. So one yenna, two yenna, three yenna, four yenna. So next we get to verse number one. So there's two lines of tab here and these two lines of tab are repeated through twice in the first verse. Now the first line of tab is pretty simple because it's just the same as the intro with one minor exception. So for the final riff, we're going to change up our second half a tiny bit. So when we go to our D shape, we're gonna start with that pinch. And instead of just plucking the third string by itself, we're gonna pluck the second and third strings. So the open second and third, do the slap, and then 
right after the slap hit the fifth string and then pluck the second and third strings again. So the second half. And the final bar in total. Next we get to the second liner tab. Now this bar is the hardest bar in this whole song. It's really tricky and actually John Mayer uses his thumb here to reach over to hit the third fret of the fifth string. Absolutely crazy, right? We're not gonna be doing that because anatomically my thumb and your thumb probably isn't as long as John Mayer's. So we're gonna fret this chord shape a little bit differently. So we're gonna start by fretting a C major nine. So what we're gonna do is basically play a C add nine chord shape. So it's the same as a G, but our index and middle finger down one string. And with your free pinky finger here, you'll put on the fourth fret of the third string. So this is C major nine. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is actually just with your index finger, just flatten it so it is barring across the second frets of the fourth and third string, all right? So this is how we're playing the C major nine. And this, again, is a tricky part in the song, um, but it's actually not too bad once you just get the hang of it. So we're gonna start by hitting the bass note and then plucking the four, third, and second strings all together. Then we'll go back to the bass note. And at this point, you'll lift your pinky finger and here's the really tricky part. We're going to pluck the four, third, and second strings, but then we're gonna hammer on our pinky finger onto the fifth fret of the fourth string and pull it off as well. So with the hammer on, pinky onto the fifth fret, and to pull off, just pull that pinky in a downward direction. Now I'm only just able to get this. My hands aren't as big as John Mayer's, so that stretch is a little tricky, but just keep at it and you should get it. Even if you don't quite get it, as long as you sort of get the rhythm right of this bar, then it should be okay and you should be able to get through it. I'll teach you an easy way of strumming this particular bar in the main riff later anyway, so there's no way you can play this, then you can fudge it with uh, an easy strummed version. And so far, we're gonna go back to the bass note, so the fifth string, and then we're gonna pluck the fourth, third, and second strings again and do another hammer on. Now this time it's just a hammer on and not a hammer on pull off. And then we go back to the bass note, lift your pinky finger, pluck the fourth, third, and second strings, and then do a muted slap after that. Now this is all pretty confusing, but if you time everything sort of at 16th notes, it should align. And so far. So after the slap, the final thing is that we hit the bass note again, and then we pluck the fourth, third, and second strings. And then we hammer our pinky finger back onto that fourth fret. So a C major nine. And that ends this bar, which is the trickiest part of this song, but again, just keep at it. And the bar in total. And we're gonna play that through twice. And for the third and the fourth bar, we just return back to our main riff. So that's it for verse one, which sounds like this. Okay, so next we get to the pre-chorus and things start getting a lot easier here because we're just strumming chords. So we're gonna start with an E minor seven, so it's the same as an E minor, but we have our ring finger here on the third fret of the second string. Now, because we've been finger picking, we're going to need to strum with our fingers. Now, to strum with your fingers, I just use the side of my index fingernail to sort of emulate the sound of a guitar pick. And on the up strum, I kind of use the side of my thumb nail and that's how I strum with my fingers or well, you can just use the side of your index finger for all the strums too but when you're strumming with the fingers just ensure that your your finger is gliding across the strings try not to get caught underneath any of the strings so we're gonna start with an E minor 7 
and then we're gonna go to a D slash F sharp. So your next finger goes up to the second fret of the sixth string, middle finger goes down to the second fret of the third string. So that's D slash F sharp, then we have G, and then C add nine. So your next and middle go down one string. Then for the second line of chords, it's E minor seven, D slash F sharp, and then G to A sus four. So the A sus four, we're just gonna keep our ring finger where it is and put our index and middle finger on the second frets of the fourth and third strings. And we're strumming from the fifth string onwards here. Now our strumming pattern for this whole pre-chorus is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. Now we're gonna play that once for each chord except for the G to the A sus4. For the G to the A sus4, we're gonna change chords on the highlighted strum here. So the highlighted down strum. So that's the only place where we share chords. So the pre-chorus in total. Next we get to the chorus and there's two lines of chords here. So we're going to start with a D chord and then we're going to go to an A sus4 that we had earlier and then a G. Now these three chords span across two bars of music here. So it's one long strumming pattern here. We're going to just play a down, 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 up for our D. So that's really easy. For the A sus4, we're just going to play it for a down, up, down, up. And then we're gonna to go to our G chord here, and this is on the end beat after the four. So down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. We put that all together in the first three chords. Now that's probably the trickiest part in terms of timing for this chorus. The rest is more or less pretty simple. So. We then go back to our D and A sus4. Now for this bar, each chord is just strung with a down, 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 up. So that's nice and easy. Then we go to our E minor seven. So just move our index and middle finger up one string. And we're just gonna strum this with the strumming pattern that we had in the pre-chorus. Now for the second line of chords, we have a D, a sus4 and then we go to the G chord and we're going to use the same strumming patterns that we had for the last three chords so now for the third bar what we're going to do is we're going to go to an F chord now I'm going to play this with my thumb reaching over the top to hit the first fret of the sixth string Ring and pinky fingers on the third frets of the fifth and fourth string, middle finger on the second fret of the third, and index finger on the first fret of the second string. So this is how I'm gonna play my F, and this will allow me to play an F sus2 in a moment, which is just the same shape, but we just lift your middle finger so that the open third string rings out. Now, if you can't reach that thumb over to hit that, first fret of the sixth string, that's okay. As long as you focus on the middle four strings, you'll get most of the sound. Now for this third bar, we're gonna strum it with a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. And the point at which we change is on the end beat after the two. So down, up, down, down, up, down, down, down. And then for the fourth bar, we have an F to a C. And this is just the strumming pattern that we have for the D to the A sus4. So each chord is down, 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 up. So. so there's quite a lot of things to consider there in terms of the strumming patterns and where chords change. But the trickiest part really is just the start where the G chord changes on an end beat. But other than that, it's pretty simple. So the chorus in total.
so after the first chorus there's a break which is just the same as the intro after the full chorus though the full band kicks in so we can finger pick if we want but what I'm going to do here is start strumming the verses and if finger picking the verses was too difficult for you earlier then you could just strum it like this so there's just two chords really we have our G and we have our D at 11 all right so the D at 11 is just going to be the same as a C chord but we're going to shift it up two frets and we're just going to focus on these middle four strings so the strumming pattern here is going to go something like this down down mute up down 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 up mute up down up now a muted strum is more or less a down strum but what we're going to do when we go for the down strum strike we're going to actually use our palm to touch the strings at the same time now don't drag your whole palm down along with the down strum just sort of pivot around the top part of the strings and just focus on hitting these top few strings with the down strum notice how i'm just rotating about my wrist and that's how i get the muted strum so down down mute up down 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 up mute up down up now we're going to change chords to the d at 11 on the three beats so down down mute up down 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 up mute up down so that's how we're going to strum the main riff what we could also do here as well is add a hammer on on the second down strum so we'll play our g chord like this actually so keep your index finger ready and free to go on the second down strum hammer it onto that second fret of the third string so down down and then after that hammer on you can lift your index finger and play the rest of the g the regular way so with the hammer on So that's how we can play the main riff strummed. So after the first chorus, we just played that through four times. Now verse number two is similar to verse number one. So the tab is identical. So again, we can finger pick this, but the structure is a little bit different. So this first line of tab is played through once, and then the second line of tab is repeated. So minor structural changes, but what we actually play is more or less the same. Now again, I'm gonna continue on strumming this second verse because we got the full band going but you could choose to pluck it and if you did the tab is below but we're going to strum it so the first line of chords is just the same as the strummed riff that i showed you in that break and we'll do that four times now for the second line of chords we get to the c major nine chord but we're not going to be doing those crazy hammer-ons we're going to be simplifying it quite a bit so we're going to actually play this as a c6 add nine so so just that index finger barring across the second frets of the fourth and third string. And we're gonna have our pinky finger here ready. Now we're gonna strum this chord with a down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, mute, up, down. That's our strumming pattern. So remember that muted strum is more or less a down strum, but we have our palm hitting the strings at the same time. We're gonna play that for this chord, but at the very final strum, we're going to hammer on our pinky finger onto that fourth fret of the third string to play the C major 9. Now that hammer on is optional. You can strum that C6 add 9 the whole way through if you want to. But we're going to do that twice for this chord and then we go back to the main riff twice. So the second line of chords. that's it for verse 2. After verse 2 we got pre-chorus 2 which is the same as pre-chorus 1 and then we have another chorus which is the same as chorus 1. Next we have a break which is just two bars of music. So we're going to play a G chord here but we're going to play it like this. So we're going to have our ring finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, your next finger on the third fret of the second string. So we're focusing on the fourth, third and second strings and also have your thumb reaching over the top to hit the third fret of the sixth string and ideally if you can mute the fifth string so when you strum all these strings only the sixth fourth third and second will ring out we're going to strum this with all down strums at eighth notes so one and two and three and four and for 
the next bar, we're going to go down to a G major seven. So with your ring finger, lift it and go down to the fourth fret of the fourth string with your middle finger. So this is G major seven. We're gonna strum this four times and go back up to our G. And that's it for the break. So one and two. Next we get to the bridge which has three lines of chords here. So there's some tricky chords, some jazzy chords in here. So hopefully this will expand your chord vocabulary. So we're gonna start with an F sus2. Now this is a really stretchy one, but you're gonna have index finger on the first fret of the sixth string, middle finger on the third fret of the fifth, and then pinky finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. So this is very stretchy. Now, if you can't get that, just play an F power chord. That's a lot easier. But this is what John Mayer is playing. So this is an F sus2, and we're just focusing on the top three strings. So have the third, second, and first strings muted. Then we go to a B flat sus2, so it's the same shape, just down one string. And then a C sus2, so it's the same shape, just up two frets. And then we go back to our B flat sus2. Now we're going to strum each chord with a down, 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 up. So that's really nice and easy. But what we're also going to do is add some palm muting as well. So take the fleshy bit of your palm, rest it lightly on the edge of the bridge. And at the same time, you'll just strum and focus on the bass notes of whatever chord you're playing. So down, 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 up. Now that is a little different to a muted strum because the muted down strum we are putting our palm sort of further down towards the neck whereas with palm muting it's right on the edge of the bridge so you can hear the sound of the notes still. So that first line of chords is played through twice and again if these stretches are too difficult for you just play the power chord of the F, the B flat and the C instead. So the second line of chords is a lot easier. It's G and then C add nine, and then we have a D at 11, but you also can put your pinky finger on the fifth fret of the first string and back to C add nine. And again, we're strumming each chord with a down, 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 down up. So the second line of chords. In the final line of chords, we have no strumming pattern here. We're just strumming each chord once but the timing is the important part here. So we're gonna start with an E minor seven bar chord. So bar your index finger across the seventh frets from the fifth string onwards, ring finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string, middle finger on the eighth fret of the second string. So strum that, and you can hit the open sixth string here if you want. That's on the one beat. On the end beat after the two, we're going to a D sus two. So shift your index finger down to the fifth fret, bar across that whole fret, ring and pinky finger on the seventh frets of the fourth and third string. And we're strumming from the fifth string onwards here. So one and two and three and four. On the end beat after the four, we're gonna to go to a C minor nine. So to play that, ring, middle and pinky finger on the third frets of the fifth, third and second string. And index finger goes on the first fret of the fourth string. So that's on the end beat after the four. And then on the next end beat after the two, the next bar, we're going to our F sus two that we had in our chorus. So all together, the final line of chords, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that's it for the bridge, which sounds like this in total. Then after that, we get back to the main riff. So the finger picked riff, and that's played through a few times. For verse number three, the first line of chords, I'm gonna continue finger picking with the main riff. So the G to the D. So I'm gonna play that four times. And then the second line of chords, I'm gonna switch to the strumming. 
instead of the finger pickings. So we've already basically learned that in verse number two. That line of chords is just played through once and not twice like in verse number two. Next we get to pre-chorus number three, which is a little different to the other pre-choruses. So we have our E minor seven, we have our D slash F sharp, we have our G, and then we go to an A sus four for two bars, but we're gonna strum this with a down, 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 up, down, 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 up. Two bars of that A sus four. So the pre-chorus number three. And then finally we have the last chorus, which is very similar to the other choruses, but we just have a slight change here. So the F to the F sus to that particular bar, that's played through three times. And then we get to the F C and we end the song on a G. So that's the only thing that differs between this final chorus and the other two choruses is that the F to the F sus two bar is played through three times. If you want to see it in context, just go to the playthrough at the end of this song. But those are all the parts of this song, which is a whole lot of fun. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerodihero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.